Question 3. A. Table 3.1 shows some properties of two group 14 elements, carbon and tin, in their standard state. The table is incomplete. Part 1 uh, completes the table 3.1. So it's uh, giving the carbon aerotroph graphite together with the tin. Mm, so the first one, the state and appearance in the standard state. So it's a gray solid for the carbon. Uh, and the uh, tin is a uh, silvery solid. For the electrical conductivity, um, so the carbon is, uh, uh, especially this graphite, is a good electrical con uh, conductor, right? So uh, it's just because the carbon is has a delocalized electrons which can move along the layers. So we know that uh, graphite is has a layers structure and each layers they are uh, this uh, covalence uh, structure means it's a giant covalence network uh, with these layers so and uh, along these layers they are delocalized electron so it can conduct electricity uh, and uh, for the thin of course uh, this one is a metal uh, it has the delocalized electrons in the uh, metallic lattice so it can carry the charge as well right so both they are good electrical conductor uh, for the type of bonding um, for this uh, graphite uh, of course is a covalent bond so in the layers so they are all the covalent bond there for the thin uh, so in this uh, metallic lattice uh, is a metallic bond so it's electrostatic forces between the delocalized electron and the uh, cation uh, for the type of structure uh, graphite is a giant of course the tin also giant uh, so this is a giant uh, molecular and this is giant uh, metallic Part 2. Identify the lattice structure shown by the graphite. I told you just now. Uh, for the this graphite, uh, this, uh, this lattice structure is giant molecular structure. Uh, so, because uh, the layers here, as I told you just now, they are network. So, it's a giant network. Uh, so, the structure we call giant molecular structure. Part 3. Explain why thin uh, has a good electrical conductivity. Uh, so I told you just now because uh, it has the delocalized electron like all this, right? So it can carry the charge or it can move along, right? Within the lattice. So uh, first, delocalized electron, uh, which they can freely move in the metallic lattice. Okay, so therefore, it's a good electrical conductor. B. Carbon is found in inorganic compound such as uh, carbonate. Part 1. Write an equation for the reactions of magnesium carbonate with the uh, HCl solutions. Okay, so we know that uh, carbonate salt, when reacts with acid, it will form uh, the, uh, another salt with CO2 and H2O. Okay, when carbonate, magnesium carbonate react with HCl, First, it will form magnesium chloride. Okay, so the this is a salt that produced, and uh, of course, it will form the gas CO two gas and H two O. Part two, describe the thermal stability of the carbonates down group two. Uh, thermal stability means uh, how stable we when we heat the compound. So we know that uh, when down the group two, uh, these uh, carbonates is hard to decompose. So when it's hard to decompose, we say that the thermal stability increases. It's more thermally stable. Uh, the explanation about this thermal stability is not really needed in the AS syllabus. Uh, in the A2, you need to explain using the uh, polarizing power uh, of the group 2 uh, cations. Uh, so when down the groups, the charge density of this group 2 cation is decreases. So the polarizing power is uh, weaker. Uh, so the uh, the bonds uh, means the CO bond here uh, is uh, 
uh, not getting weakened uh, by this uh, uh, cation. So all these explanations you need to uh, uh, you need to learn in the A2 later. Okay, part three. Ammonium carbonate undergoes an acid-base reaction with sodium hydroxide. Uh, explain this statement. Uh, so acid-base uh, in this uh, AS syllabus, uh, most likely you need to uh, relate to the bronsted rory acid base. So means it's a proton's donor, which is acid, and the proton acceptor, which is a base. So means now you need to identify which species is the one that donates proton, which species is the one that uh, gains the uh, proton? Okay, so uh, ammonium and the hydroxide is the ones that uh, act as the acid base. So uh, I just uh, use this equation to simplify the 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 statement. Um, so ammonium from the ammonium carbonate okay, will react with hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, it will form ammonia and water. So when this ammonium and hydroxide reacts, actually this is an acid-base reaction. Ammonium now is a proton donor, donates proton to the hydroxide, so this is acid. Hydroxide is a proton acceptor, so it's a base. So this is an acid-base reaction. So you're just using this one to explain the statement. Okay, ammonium ion is a proton donor and hydroxide is a proton acceptor. That's why we say that this is acid-base reaction. Part C. Figure 3.1 shows a sketch of the ionization energy of silicon. Uh, silicon is a group 14 elements, means uh, it's having four valence electrons. Right? So four valence electrons means the fifth electrons it must remove from inner shell, which is closer to the nucleus and it uh, needs more energy. Okay, so uh, for this one, uh, part one, completes the graph uh, in the figure 3.1 uh, to show the third to sixth ionization energy of silicon. Okay, so what you need to do is, uh, okay, the, you need to put uh, a dot or circle is okay. So this one, you just uh, plot that roughly. Uh, so for the first ionization energy to second, this is given and the third ionization energy you need to uh, of course uh, plot to the higher ie slightly higher and the fourth ie also slightly higher so it slowly increase when it's reached the fifth ionization energy so means from the fourth to fifth ionization energy you need to uh, make sure okay uh, there is a big jump there so you draw uh, slightly higher okay, for the fifth IE uh, to show that uh, there is a big gap or big jump from this. Uh, so means uh, this IE is used for the first four valence electron and the fifth IE is the energies that remove the electrons in the inner shell. After the fifth, then it will just increase slowly again. Right, so you just plot like this. Okay, part two. Uh, construct an equation to present the second ionization of a silicon. Uh, so second ionization energy means it must start from the this uh, silicon ion with a charge positive. Right, must be a gaseous state to form the Si two positive gaseous state with one electrons removed. Again, must start from this species, okay. silicon with one charge positive gas state. Part D. Figure 3.2 shows the boiling point of the hydrates of group 14 elements from carbon to this uh, lab. Um, so we know that uh, from this uh, figure 3.2, the boiling point of these uh, uh, hydrates Group 14 hydrides uh, is uh, increases, you see, uh, it's getting higher boiling point. Uh, and you need to explain first uh, the trend in the boiling point 
so how we uh, explain this trend? Okay, first, uh, we know that it's down the group. Down the group means uh, the group 14 elements is getting larger. Means uh, the carbon, silicon, all this. So they are getting larger size. When the size is larger, so you need to know, uh, it's because of the electrons. Because when down the group, the electrons number is getting more and the size okay, of the this uh, uh, molecule uh, is getting larger and therefore the intermolecular force which is the id id forces is getting larger or greater so means the boiling point will be higher okay so this is uh, uh, points that you need to use for the explanation Okay, so explain this trend, uh, why it increases, uh, because from the CH4 to the PPH4, okay, the numbers of electrons increases. When number of electron increases, means the size of the molecules is getting larger. When the size is larger, means the instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces is greater. And more energy is needed to break this forces the intermolecular force okay that's how you explain part two deduce the shape of this uh, SiH4 uh, so because the silicon now bonded to this uh, four hydrogen uh, so uh, since it has four bonding so it must be a tetrahedral something like this of course the bond angle is around 109.5 degree right so the shape of this molecule must be tetrahedral because the silicon now is has four uh, bonding. Part E, silicon readily reacts uh, with elements of high electronegativity, uh, like chlorine in the part one. Write an equations uh, for the formations of the SiCl4 from its uh, uh, constituent uh, elements. So uh, we start with the silicon, and of course the chlorine gas so when the silicon react with chlorine uh, so it will form the SiCl4 silicon tetrachloride uh, this is liquid uh, so this one is liquid uh, of course this one you no need to put the stay symbol because it's not really asking so you just put the silicon with the chlorine to form this SiCl4 describe what is observed when a small sample of the SiCl4 is added to water so uh, of course you at least need to know the reaction uh, SiCl4 when it's dissolved uh, or is added to water it will follow this reaction okay, first you see white precipitates form which is the uh, SiO2 and second you see white fumes because the HCl will produce from the reaction so what you will see is uh, of course the misty of steamy fumes or you can say white precipitate so these are the two observations you can mention. Okay, next part. Uh, so we have the SiO2 and the SiCl4. Now, SiO2 is a white solid melts above 1,700 degrees C. So means uh, this SiO2 it must have a giant structure. So this is for sure. As long as it's a giant structure, uh, the melting points and boiling points they will be very high so the SiO2 okay, as you learn in the chapter so you should know is a giant molecular network like this so one silicon is bonded covalently bonded uh, to four oxygen so the red colors particles here is oxygen and one oxygen will bond to two silicon and this is the covalence uh, network. So that's why we say that this is a giant molecular structure or giant covalent structure. And for the SiCl4, okay, as you can see from this, uh, this part, SiCl4 is actually a small molecule. So one molecule of SiCl4 is just like this. Okay, so they, there will be an intermolecular force between the molecules. Uh, so because the SiCl4 is a non-polar molecule, between the molecules, they were having the ID-ID forces. Uh, so ID-ID forces, 
is much weaker than Koblen bond. So that's why the SICL4 uh, is uh, liquid at room temperature uh, because it has a simple molecular structure uh, with uh, ID ID forces. Uh, so this is what you need to use for the explanations uh, uh, means uh, for this uh, melting point, difference in melting point. Okay, again, uh, explain the difference in the melting point of these two compounds with reference to structure and bonding. So you need to focus on these two. What is the structure and the bonding for each compound? So for the SiO2, so it has a giant covalent structure, like I told you just now, and the SiCl4, it just has a simple molecular structure. So it has no covalence networks there. Uh, that's why it's simple. The SiO2 it has a covalent networks there, so it's giant structure. So if we compare these two now, uh, because of different structure, now less energy needed to overcome the ID ID uh, forces between the SiCl4 molecules. So ID ID forces between the molecules is much weaker less energy needed compared to what compared the energies needed to overcome this covalent bond uh, so that's how you explain yeah? okay so the last one part f uh, things form uh, amphoteric oxide so the sno2 suggests a formula of the thin compound that form when the sno2 reacts with the h2so4 uh, so first, you need to know the oxidation uh, state of this uh, the thing. So it's actually uh, uh, positive four means the charge is four positive, and uh, sulfate is uh, the two negative. So therefore, we know that uh, when these two ions react and form a compound, it will be the Sn with these two sulfate. Okay, that's all. Thank you.